just awesome to see the whole entire East Coast just light up. I feel like 1995 all over again. It's honestly been exhausting. Every swell has just been good. Oh, look at that thing. Oh. <laughs> the Atlanta hurricane season. Maybe you've heard of it. It's basically the only time the rest of the world cares about this place. When East Coast and Caribbean surfers get to buy back a little bit of the spotlight that's usually shining elsewhere. When they get to flex their true identity, and if luck permits, their home breaks are validated as world class. This year, from Nova Scotia to Alabama, Barbados to Puerto Rico, identities were flexed, breaks were validated, luck did permit. My name is Kirk Corte. I'm the VP of Forecasting at Surfline, and we are here in the Outer Banks office in Nags Head, North Carolina. Early season was characteristically slow. We had a couple of tropical cyclones during the early part of the year, two of which occurred in June. Um, but really, from a surfer's perspective, it was pretty quiet. So August 20th, things really kicked off for us. We had four tropical cyclones form within 39 hours. That was the quickest that's ever happened on record in the Atlantic Basin. So Hurricane Franklin was one of those four tropical cyclones, and it was the one we were definitely most interested in. So initially, it moved really slow uh, to the north of the islands, and as conditions gradually became more favorable for development, the system underwent rapid intensification as it moved generally into the western Atlantic. That sprayed swell basically everywhere from the Caribbean all the way up through the northeast. So lots of waves all around, but one of the standouts was the Outer Banks, where this was coupled with really light winds and days of great conditions, which are, uh, as we know, not all that frequent here on the Outer Banks. been like three weeks, kind of some of the best run I've seen for hurricane season in a long time. September to remember. Sunny! Our best surf was probably down near uh, Brett's house in Buxton. We just had peaks on peaks with no one around for a few hours, like shore break triangles up and down the beach. Pretty memorable. So while many surfers were paying attention to Hurricane Franklin in the Western Atlantic, we were actually watching Adalia take shape in the Northwest Caribbean. The system eventually tracked into the Gulf of Mexico, rapidly intensified into a Category 4 hurricane, before eventually making landfall in the Big Bend area of Florida. West Florida saw windy, chunky, you know, storm surf, but the, the real place where the great surf was was the Florida Panhandle over in Alabama. Not exactly what you think of when you think of Atlantic tropical storms and great pumping surf, but they had a really great day of waves and some incredible footage coming out of a place like Alabama where we normally don't see that. Franklin and Adalia's one-two punch already made it a September to remember for the southern half of the East Coast. Once Hurricane Lee entered the picture, the northern half got their due, and all the while Caribbean hotspots continued to cook. So Hurricane Lee was special. You know, anytime we have this this typical Cabo Verde type track, with a surfer on the East Coast, that's like kind of the track you want. And you combine that with Lee intensifying into a major, you know, Category Five hurricane, something that's incredibly rare over that part of the Atlantic. Um, anytime you have a storm that gets you know, wind speeds up to 165 miles an hour, like Hurricane Lee was. You know, your eyes kind of kind of open up a little bit more, and you, as a surfer, you sit back and you say, "Okay, gosh, like who's going to get the best surf from this?" Wow! No, it's been a crazy, crazy run of swells here at least in the Dominican Republic. For the last four weeks, it was a lot of waves, flat morning and afternoon and uh, it's been a very memorable September. Well, system tracking like Hurricane Lee did, it's gonna send waves pretty much everywhere. You know, the Caribbean, uh, Florida, Southeast, Northeast, everybody gets some, but you only really have one 
you know, standout zone a lot of times with these swells. Normally I'd sort of be driving around trying to score the best spot, but with everywhere looking like it was gonna have a window, I just decided to stay in Jersey and wait for that here. And it ended up being a pretty good call. Yeah, it was head high, foot overhead, light offshore winds, just barreling up and down the beach. You know, pretty much all that you could ask for during a hurricane swell like this. Um, Hurricane Lee definitely delivered in New Jersey. Luckily my board didn't break because I thought it was a nug. It was like an eight foot wave a slab right on my head. Lee left no spot unstirred during its recurring route, and the few who did miss out would get their turn a week later from two more storms, Nigel and Ophelia. So Nigel was a little bit different because it recurved a little bit further out in the Atlantic. So that meant a lot of the energy was more focused up uh, towards the northern parts of the East Coast and also uh, into parts of Canada as well. Um, Ophelia was, it was interesting because it formed off an old stationary frontal boundary off the southeastern U.S. before it tracked made landfall in North Carolina. So kind of different systems and, and definitely different from the ones that came before it, but it also helped turn on some locations that maybe previously hadn't gotten great waves from Lee or Franklin or a Dahlia. The frequency and the intensity of some of the storms have been pretty amazing. I don't know if this hurricane season is what for the record books, but it certainly kind of feels like one. The plot thickened in October when the caboose to this runaway swell train, Tropical Storm Philippe, came more like a fall swell than a hurricane swell. After 48 consecutive days of tropical activity, Philippe's surf was colder, browner, more menacing, and as heavy as Hatteras could hold. Every storm has produced like different types of waves, like there's some long periods, some short periods, big waves, rippable waves, and then the fleece fall was just slabby, just heavy. The back end two days of the spot were perfect, perfect playful kids waves. I just got to surf for like eight hours a day with my brother. It was definitely like the best times. This is gonna go down in history for an epic run. And the reason why is because everybody has a story to tell about the swell that they caught you know, during the 2023 season. Technically, hurricane season is six months long, but if we were to focus on these six weeks alone, it would still go down as a banner season back east, where wind meets water, somewhere in the Western Atlantic, anywhere between Barbados and Canada, right here in Hurricane Alley. The hunt continues.